Welcome to Probability and Statistics. In this lecture video, we're going to continue um, talking about our hypothesis testing. So, um, so last time we did where we talk about the hypothesis testing, what it's all about, and we did examples of where sigma is known. So now let's take a look at sigma is unknown. So when the sigma is population standard deviation is unknown, then I will begin to thinking about the t value. So on the formula sheet, okay, when you read this problem where it does not say what the population standard deviation is, you think about the t critical t value, which again, you know, we will do a t test. All right, so let's see what we got here for this example. Director of research and development is testing a new drug. She wants to know if the evidence, if there is evidence at 0 0.025 level, so that's my alpha, that the drug stay in the system more than 345 minutes. Okay, for a sample of 13 patients, the average time the drug stay in the system is 347. Okay, with a standard deviation 24. So this 24 does not say population standard deviation. Let me take a look right here. Same problem, but the 19 was population standard deviation. So this example doesn't say population standard deviation. So this 24 got to be the sample standard deviation out of the 13 patients. Okay, so let's see the null hypothesis. All right, the 347 coming from the patient. So that means the null hypothesis. What the drug is supposed to say is the mean time that we will stay in the drug got to be 345 minutes. All right, but she feel that it's supposed to be more than 345 based on her sample. So she is actually the alternative she is saying is more than 345 okay so now this test got to be a one tail test to be more specific it got to be the right tail test all right the next part find the value of statistics we'll do that in a minute all right determines the decision and we will make a decision all right determine decision rule for rejecting all hypothesis okay so this so this part is just want me to want me to say um, why um, what made me to reject or fail to reject okay so I will show you how to do this just in a minute okay when I get done with the last part the decision so let's find our find our test statistic real quick. Okay, so uh, let's think about this. If I go to my calculator, okay, stat test. All right, this time we will do a t test because I do not know my population standard deviation. So I'm testing 345. The simple mean that this lady conducted was 347. My simple standard deviation is 24. Simple size was only 13. All right. One tail test. This is going to be a right tail test. So let's draw our conclusion. All right. So this T, okay, rather than Z, this T is actually my test statistics. Run to three decimal place. So my test statistic T is 0 0.300. Zero. Okay. Alright, I got my P right here. Okay, 0 0.3844, but the problem doesn't ask for it. So determine the decision rule for rejecting. So before we do that, let's draw our picture. This is a right tail test. The difference between this problem versus other one we've done so far is 
rather than having a critical value z sub alpha I sh should have critical value z excuse me t sub alpha okay rather than t rather than z now I'm gonna have t okay so what is my critical value of t so let's think back on the t the t values if I go to my table alright I got the standard normal distribution the negative z-score positive z-score then my critical value of t okay this is a one tail test alright this is a one tail test so go by the degree of freedom and the area in one tail okay so how do I find the area in one tail okay what does this tell me from the problem this problem don't even have alpha okay oh yes it does 0 0.025 right here that was at the beginning so the alpha was 0 0.025 so that means the area in one tail because it's a one tail test is 0 0.025 so degree of freedom remember now patient is 13 degree of freedom is always n minus 1 So that will be 12. Okay, 0 0.025, one tail test. <coughs> Excuse me, 0 0.025, one tail, go down to degree of freedom, 12, 2.179. So this is 2.179. That's my critical value T. All right. So where does my test statistic falls? Point three zero zero. Where does that fall? Does it fall in the critical region or fail to reject? Um, point three is a lot smaller than two point one seven, so it falls in here. All right. So our answer got to be fail to reject the null hypothesis okay so since we fail to reject the null hypothesis what was the decision rule make me say it failed to reject I failed to reject because my test statistic falls in what falls in the fail to reject region it falls point three falls here because my critical value of t so my decision rule got to be I will reject my null hypothesis I will reject my null hypothesis if my test statistic t is greater than the critical value of t 2.179 right if the test statistic okay is bigger than 2.179 then what I will reject okay so that's my decision rule okay so let me if I if I would just write out in words we will reject no hypothesis if test statistic zero point three zero zero is greater than critical value excuse me two point 
one seven nine. Okay, if I write out in words, that's what it would look like. That's what we just did. Okay, so I think the homework will, will ask you to say this part down here. Okay, so it, all right. Hope that makes sense a little bit. So if I do the p is my p value less than my alpha. All right, my p value. If it's less than, I reject. 0.3844. It's 0.3844 less than my alpha, 0 0.035. Um, no. If it's not, we fail to reject. So let's go back and review this real quick, okay? Alright. Oops, sorry. So if it's less than, we reject. If it's not, if it's greater than, we fail to reject. Okay, so we draw the same conclusion. Okay, we draw the same conclusion. Alrighty. Let's try another one. Let's see if there's another one. Uh, no, I think there's one in the handout. Let me just kind of go to the handout and grab this problem real quick for you. Number company is making boards that are 2,872 milliliters tall. If the boards are too long, they must be trimmed. If they are too short, they cannot be used. So a simple 19 board is made, and it is found that they have a mean of 2871.6 milliliters with a variance of a hundred. Okay, so this 2871.6 is all of the sample 19. So this 100 got to be the uh, sample variance. Okay, this is your sample mean. Is there evidence at 0 0.01 level that the board are too short? Okay, so state the null hypothesis. So they are saying is it too short? So What they are testing is the null hypothesis is supposed to be 2872. Okay, so based on their sample, they feel that is it too short? So the mean that they, the alternative that they are testing is, is it less than 2872. Okay, all right, find the p value for the hypothesis test. So this problem will be to find p value and make a decision based on that. So I'm gonna show you the same way as I show you with the previous problem, okay? So this is a left tail test, okay? So let's type in what we know, let's type in what we know. So since I don't have a population standard deviation in my sample variance is 100. So if I take a square root to get my sample standard deviation, they gotta be 10. The square root of 100 is 10. All right, so test, steps, test number two. All right, the mean I'm testing 2872. The sample mean that found was 2871.6. Sample of 19 boards, oh, sorry. St sample standard deviation is 10. The sample size is 19 board. And this is a left tail test. Okay. Alrighty. So my test statistic T 
my test statistics. I'm gonna write it down. Negative point one seven. All right, my p value round to four decimal place. Let me put it right here. Point four three one eight. Alright, cool, cooping, cooping, cooping. Alright, so the only thing, alright, so let's do this real quick. Let me show I do this one more time, okay? So, this is not Z sub alpha, okay? This is actually what? T sub alpha. Okay. So, I gotta find the critical value. Um. Oh, sorry. This is a left tail test. Sorry about that. Gotta go back and grab a left tail test. All right, left tail test. So this is gonna be. Negative T sub alpha. So let's see. My alpha was 0 0.01. So let's go to the table. One tail test, 0 0.01. Degree of freedom. It was 19 boards. Degree of freedom is 1 minus, so it got to be 18. So first column go down, 0.1. Excuse me. My alpha was 0 0.01. So 0 0.01 is right here. Sorry about that. That's 0 0.1. 0 0.01. 0 0.01. So this column go down to degree of freedom 18. Test statistic 2.552. You'll be a negative. You'll be negative 2.552, all right? Because this is a left tail test. All right, so where does my test statistic fall? Negative 0.17. Does it fall in the rejection region or fail to reject? It gotta be right here, right? Because negative two is a lot smaller than negative point one seven. All right, so my conclusion is fail to reject again. All right, now is my p value less than my alpha? Is my p value less than my alpha? Remember what my PBLU was, point what? Four three one eight. Okay, is that less than my alpha, which is point zero one? So alpha is the area of the critical region. Okay. All right. Fail to reject is my PBLU. That area of the curve is a lot bigger than what? The, the rejection region so the answer is no so when we say no we uh, fail to reject okay all right uh, let's try an example okay so we're doing the same thing over and over it just um, um, uh, we're doing the same thing over and over um, it's just a matter of which test are we doing Z test T test and now Let's deal with population proportion. Okay, so population proportion here, if I go back to stat and test, population proportion will be the one proportion Z test. Okay, because I'm dealing with percentage now. So we'll go to one proportion Z test. Right, and see what this asks me to type in. Type in what? The number of the number of things that have the same characteristic divided by the sample size. Okay, so let's see. Alright, a sample of 1200 computer chips. So my N is already what? 1200. Reveal that 49% of chips fail in the first thousand hours. 
Okay, so the sample shows that 49% of chips fails in the first thousand hours. The company's promotional literature states that 50% of chip fails in the first thousand hours. So the literature is what we're trying to test. So the quality control manager wants to test the claim that the actual percentage fail is what? This word right here tell you what test it is. It fails below the stated percentage. So the null hypothesis, okay, population proportion P is supposed to be 50%. But the quality control manager feels that it is supposed to be below, based on the sample he took, it's supposed to be below 50%. Okay. All right, find the value of test statistics. All right, we'll do that in the calculator. Find the p-value. All right. Uh, identify the value of significance, which is a, what, 0 0.05. So my alpha is a 0 0.05. All right, then we're going to make a decision. All right, so this is going to be a left tail test, like the previous problem. So let's look at the formula sheet for a minute, okay? Mm. If I go back to chapter 10 formulas. All right. Test statistic for hypothesis for population proportion P. So we're dealing with P right now because the percentage. So that tells you that will be one proportion Z test. Okay. All right, so let's check it out. All right. The P I'm testing is 0 0.5. All right. So what's my X? What's my X? What's my N? Think about it. What's my X? My, my I know my sample is 1,200, right? And these 1,200 shows that 49% of chips fail in the first thousand hours. So how many chips? X will be how many chips that fail? The actual number of chips fail in the first thousand hours. So if the total amount is 1,200, 49% will fail. So that will be what? That will be 1,200 times 49%. That will tell you how many chips will actually fail. And that will be my X times 0.49. So 588 will fail. Because 588 out of 1,200 will give me that 49% fail. All right, left tail test, calculate. Okay, so here's your p hat. Your p hat is forty nine percent because that's your simple. It's your simple proportion. So this z is your test statistics. Negative point six nine. All right. My p value, population proportion p, 0.2442. All right, this is a left tail test. So I'm gonna go back to the previous problem, still one of the left tail test. So this is not a critical t, so it. So now we're gonna go back to uh, negative z sub alpha as a critical value. All right. So let me put it right here. All right, so let's look at the table, okay? Table 10.1, 0 0.05, one tail test. 0 0.05, one tail test. So that would be 1.645. Would be negative 1.645.
because I'm doing a left tail test. All right, so where does my test statistic fall to negative 0.69? Does my test statistic will fall here or will fall to fail to reject? Got to be fail to reject. Alright, so my conclusion will be fail to reject the null hypothesis. Alright, so is my p value? my p-value 0.2442 less than my alpha 0 0.05 uh, no so that will be fail to reject if it's less than you we reject if it's not we fail to reject okay so what's my conclusion then what's my final final conclusion there is or there is not sufficient evidence oh I fail to reject so that means what the sample that this person collected okay the quality control manager collected there is not sufficient evidence to support the claim that the percentage of chips fail is below 50% Okay, we fail to reject, so there is not sufficient evidence. Alrighty, so that's the final conclusion. I think this part you will actually, um, you actually, it's a multiple choice part. So you will select there is not sufficient evidence. Alright. Now, um, real quick, the difference between one tail test versus a two tail test. Um, all the steps are the same. It just um, uh, altern the hap alternative hypothesis will be not equal to. Not equal to will be two tail test. All right. So when you find your critical um, value of two tail test, just make sure you're gonna use the two tail test. Okay. We choose our alpha was 0 0.05. So two tail test will be using 1.96 instead. Okay. All right. For the T value for the T test earlier. Okay. If it's a two tail test, alpha will be area in one tail. Okay. Earlier, remember our earlier was alpha was 0 0.01. Okay. So, if 0 0.01 was the alpha and we're doing a two tail test, okay, think about this now. This is not 0 0.02. If 0 0.01 is area of one, one tail, okay, All right. if alpha is area of one tail, then two tail will be 0 0.05. So two tail, each tail will be 0 0.05. So that's why you look on here. Okay, just gotta be careful what you what 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 T value you are looking for. All right. Now the last thing I want I want to show you how to test is testing for population variance or standard deviation. Okay, this is a little bit um, different because we, we gotta do all this in the calculator. Excuse me, we gotta do all this by hand. So let me show you the formula Alright. If you go back to chapter ten. Alright, test statistic for hypothesis test for population variance or population standard deviation. So this is the same formula we we seen before with a degree of freedom n minus one okay to find the chi square so my notation will be slightly different here let me come over here 
on the handout, okay, my chi square is using this. Okay, this subscript right here is sigma of null, because that's what we're testing. So I'm gonna put my formula up here. All right, cool bean. All right, there's one more thing I want to I want to write down. I didn't have on your handout. Okay. So this is your chance statistics. Okay. When we go to the table and look up our critical value, all right, for the left tail test. Left tail test. It got to be chi square of one minus alpha. All right, right tail test. It got to be chi square of alpha. Okay, so for the two tail test, this got to be the one on the left, this this critical value is on the left, this critical value is on the right. Alright, so how can you remember that for the test? Well, if you look back on chapter 8, okay, which is kind of tough because they got this thing backwards. Okay, they got this thing backwards compared to what we're doing right now. Okay, just kind of give you a hint. Left tail is one minus alpha. Okay, right tail is this one. Okay, and when you when you look at the number, you can tell when you once you find the critical value, you can tell that um, doesn't make sense based on the picture itself. So. Um, that would be one of the biggest hints. So let me go to my chi square real quick. All right, let's check this out. Okay, let's see how this how we do this problem. If the quality of teaching is similar in a school, the scores on the standardized test will have the standard deviation of twenty nine. So that's probably the number we're going to be testing. The superintendent wants to know if there is a disparity in teaching quality and decide to investigate whether the standard deviation of the test score has changed. So the, so, so they're claiming the standard deviation will be plus and minus about 29 points on the standardized test. So she samples 24 random students and find a mean score of 163 and all of the ones she sampled it the simple standard deviation is 20.7366 okay so let's look at the formula and let's think about okay what are these number represent okay the standard steep deviation 29 got to be referring to the one I'm testing so the null hypothesis of the standard deviation, population standard deviation sigma is 29. Is there evidence that the standard deviation of test score has decreased? So decreased right here tell me that the superintendent feels, she feels that the population standard deviation is going to be less than 29. Decrease means less than 29. So, the sigma, population standard deviation sigma, okay, all right, is 29, but we got to square, when we do this in the calculator, we got to square this, because um, if you square the 29, that becomes variance, okay, your S, your sample standard deviation is 20.7366. Okay, so that goes right here. Simple is the simple is 163. All right, my alpha is 0 0.05. D 
determine the critical value of the tear statistics. Okay, if the tear is two tailed, separate the value with a comma. All right, so this is a one tail test. This is going to be a left tail test. So, so that will be chi square. All right, left tail test is one minus alpha. One minus point zero zero five is point nine nine five. Degree of freedom is n minus one. That'll be 162. So what's my critical value for the test statistics? 0.995. All right. So this is an area to the right on the table. So think about it. It's a left tail test. So the alpha is referring to area to the left. And the alpha is 0 0.005. So that's the area to the left for the left tail test. And on the table, we got to read area to the right. Okay. 0 0.995 degree freedom, 162. So let's go down, 162. Hold on a minute, I'm sorry. Not 162. Oh man, what the hell am I? Oh man, sorry about that. Simple size was what? Simple size was 20. Oh crap. Whoa. Simple size was 24. I'm sorry. N is 24. 29 was the mean I'm testing. Simple size is 24. So degree of freedom is 23. 23.995. 23. 9.260. 9.260 Sorry about that. I thought this 163 is the is the simple mean. Alrighty. So I got my test statistics. Determine the value of a test statistics and make a decision. So right, let's find the test statistics real quick. And now we'll draw the picture. Maybe it will make a little bit more sense. Alright, so based on what I got here, let's write it out. My chi square is going to be n is 24 minus 1 is 23, so I'll go ahead and say 23 times my simple standard deviation s. s is 20.73. Six, six and make sure you got to square it the only time you don't square it is if they give you the variance already divided by Sigma I'm testing 29 got to be squared three decimal place 23 times 20.7366 squared then we will divide it by 29 to the second power okay three decimal plate that will be 11.760 okay now let's make a decision okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to 8.5 notes I'm gonna get myself a chi-square distribution. I'm gonna draw the picture for you. Okay, whoa. All right, check it out, check it out, check it out. So what's going on here is, okay, I'm doing a left tail test. All right, and my critical value is 9.260.
so my 9.260 might be right here for example this is a left tail test so as you can see just like all the other problem okay if you fall into this side if, the, if you fall into the left tail that will be what reject the right side does not okay just like all, all the other pictures it's very similar so this area right here okay will be my alpha all right which is what 0 0.005 so you know I kind of exaggerate this a little bit maybe I need to move over a little bit more all right so let's move it over a little bit more there we go all right so my test statistic and not to be 11.760 so where does it fall does it fall in the re critical region does it fall in the tail or fall on the other side uh, 11 is bigger so you fall on the what the other side so my conclusion we will fail to reject the null hypothesis because if you fall in the tail, that would be rejection region. So since we didn't fall in the tail, then we fail to reject. Okay. Now, <sighs> just be careful. Okay, I know this is difficult. Um, two tail test. Okay, two tail test. Um, this is a left tail test. So if it's a right tail test. Okay, we will use alpha. Okay, so that means we will just look up 0 0.005 from the very beginning. And the end. Alright, so if it's a two tail test, then I will need to look up the 0 0.005 and the 0.995 at degree of freedom 23. Okay, that's how we do the two tail test. And again, you know, once you know your critical value, chi square then once you use the formula to find that one test statistics okay then you can see where does it fall does it fall into the tails on the two sides for the two tail test or does it fall in the fail to reject region okay so that will do us for the hypothesis testing okay thank you for watching